Right guys, welcome to our lesson on muscular system responses to exercise. When we start to exercise, the body responds. Um, and we need to be clear from the start here that when we use the word response, um, it's a specific term, it has a specific meaning. Uh, as far as exercise physiology and anatomy and physiology is concerned. When we talk about responses, we mean what happens in the short term. We mean how the body um, changes uh, the way it's working in order to respond to the demand um, that exercise is placing upon the body. So a response is a short term thing. It just happens um, during a single bout of exercise or um, during a single run or whatever the exercise might be and it is where the physiology of the body um, kicks in and responds and allows um, that exercise to take place it's it's about the function and the physiology of the body enabling the exercise to occur and it's different therefore to adaptations these two terms, responses and adaptations, are very clearly different and distinguished from one another. An adaptation is something that actually changes in the physical structure, the anatomical structure of the body. It might be an increase in muscle size. It might be um, hypertrophy, cardiac hypertrophy in the heart. Whatever it is, an adaptation is an actual change in the structure, uh, in the makeup, in the stuff itself uh, that structures the body. And so those are the kinds of long term goals that we look for when we exercise over a period of time. It might be uh, muscle size uh, or whatever. So a response is always short term and an adaptation is always long term. A response is to do with the physiological function, whereas an adaptation is to do with the anatomical structure. So physiology is what it does. And anatomy is the way that it is built or structured or designed. That's the, that's the distinction we need to make before we move on between the terms response and adaptation. You need to know and be aware that those two words mean different things. Responses are short-term changes in physiological function. Adaptations, however, are long-term changes in anatomical structure. So let's get into some of the responses that the muscular system makes when we start to exercise. So remember, we're talking about short term, single bout of exercise. What does the physiology and the function of the body do to enable us um, within the muscular system to exercise? So the first thing is that we have an increased blood supply. And that is because when we exercise, there is an increase in the demand for oxygen. And also an increase in the demand for glucose because those two things enable us to provide energy to our working muscles. But how do we get that oxygen and that glucose to the muscles so that they can be, um, they can be broken down or utilised in the muscle cells, in the mitochondria, uh, used through the Krebs cycle, the electron transport chain and so on, which, which we've looked at previously. How do we get those things there? We get them there in the bloodstream. And so if we can supply more blood to the muscles, then they can produce and provide energy more quickly, more rapidly and more efficiently and effectively for exercise. So if we can increase the blood supply, we can provide more oxygen and we can provide more glucose. Another benefit, of course, of increasing blood supply is that we can get rid of any waste products. So carbon dioxide in particular and also lactate. Uh, which both of which are built up in uh, a greater proportion, a greater concentration during exercise, we can get rid of those because they are dumped, if you like, into the bloodstream and then carried away. One of the ways this is done, of course, is through the vasodilation of the blood vessels um, surrounding the muscle tissue. So that vasodilation, you remember, is where uh, the blood vessels get wider to allow more blood to flow through. And if we can vasodilate the vessels around the muscle, that means more blood flow, more blood supply to the muscle, which means more oxygen and more glucose. The next uh, muscular system response to exercise is an increase in muscle temperature. So we know that in the muscle is, um, as far as we're concerned, where the 
uh, where respiration takes place, uh, where um, where energy is produced. Um, but that reaction, that respiration, is what we call exothermic. That is the process of breaking glucose and the process of breaking down fat in some cases produces heat within the muscle. Because that heat therefore is produced as we exercise and as we exercise more and more or with a greater intensity the, the production of energy goes up therefore so does the production of heat. So our muscles become increasingly warm. This has a, a benefit um, in terms of our increased muscle pliability. Pliability simply means the stretchiness of the muscle itself. And stretchy muscles, long um, stretchy muscles, have a couple of really important benefits. One is that they reduce the risk of injury. So if our muscles are nice and warm, they're nice and pliable and flexible, then the risk of injury is hugely reduced. The likelihood of us tearing um, tearing the muscle, tearing the muscles within the muscle, or even the tendons from the bones um, is much reduced if our muscles are nice and warm and pliable. And of course, it also has the added benefit of a greater range of movement, um, which is useful in all sorts of different kinds of sports, um, not least for sports that require production of force or power. Next, we have... Um, the production of lactate. We've mentioned this already, uh, but lactate is produced particularly when we have when we undergo high intensity exercise. Specifically, it is um, the, uh, one of the two anaerobic energy systems. That is the lactate system. The second of the three systems produces lactate as a byproduct of energy production, as a byproduct of anaerobic respiration. And of course, we know that anaerobic respiration is the sort of respiration we have to rely upon when the intensity of the exercise is so high that we can't supply enough oxygen to use purely the aerobic system. So the intensity goes right up in, in the exercise that we're doing. We cannot provide sufficient oxygen. Uh, we end up in what is called a hypoxic state because the, there is insufficient oxygen um, being supplied to the muscles to meet the demand for energy. So we use partly the aerobic system, but also partly we use the lactate system, which provides energy in the absence of oxygen, but as a byproduct, we produce this lactate, which then ends up in the bloodstream. And we've talked previously about a number of negative uh, possible side effects of a large increase of lactate in the blood, not least uh, the level of acidity both in the blood and in the muscle. Finally then, um, in terms of responses of the muscular system to exercise, the last one here is micro tears. And these are simply minuscule tears, very tiny tears um, in the muscle tissue itself that we sustain when we undergo resistance exercise in particular. So whenever we're lifting weights, whenever we're shifting large uh, masses about the place, um, we sometimes can cause tears in the muscle and really that's a good thing um, provided we manage it and allow our body time to recover because it's when these tears occur that the body then is stimulated uh, to grow back stronger well that would be an adaptation we're thinking about um, responses so in the short term therefore these minuscule micro tears in the muscle produce swelling and they produce pain in the muscle um, the most tearing um, is caused by a particular type of muscular contraction. And think back to the types of muscular traction, contraction, and you'll remember that we have isometric, we have eccentric, and we have concentric contractions. Well, eccentric contractions, those contractions where the muscle is under tension and yet is lengthening, those are the kinds of contractions that produce the most micro tears. So if you're going to be doing um, work that involves plyometrics or lots of eccentric contractions, um, breaking and slowing and so on, then you are very likely to have a large number of micro, micro tears, more micro tears than you would do with other types of contraction. 
And so therefore, eccentric contractions are particularly associated with what we call DOMS, which stands for delayed onset muscle soreness. And that's that soreness that you feel after sort of 24 hours, 48 hours, the last sort of two or three days after a bout of exercise, um, particularly as a result of any exercise that involves lots of eccentric contractions. So that's it um, for muscular system responses to exercise, uh, several for you to think about, um, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening.